This right here is a former secret Soviet base. Right now we're in Borne Solinovo. Pardon my Polish, but we are about like a few hours away uh, from the nearest big city of Poland, which is Warsaw. Uh, and this is the military museum of this former huge but secret Soviet base. About 12,000 Soviet soldiers were stationed here at some point, and we can see the abandoned buildings in the distance. But let's look at the military museum right over here today. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanus, and let me know where you're watching from. And I love that there's a cat hanging about. <laughs> he was asking for food. <laughs> oh, wow. So here we have a huge, massive artillery. Look at that. Massive rockets right over here. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanus, and we are located right now in Poland. And just imagine the line of these approaching the city. Now, of course, Poland was, I would say, arguably the most devastated of the countries. It was a terrible death count. 5.8 million Polish people lost their lives and the ensuing battles and exterminations that took place here in this country. It was the Soviets and the Germans at each other's throats at first um, dividing the country in half and then the Soviets eventually taking it over and keeping it for a very long time. And right over here we see the weapons of destruction that was used in this country. So hello, hello everyone, welcome. I don't know how to read Polish, and unfortunately it'll be difficult to try to translate uh, using Google Maps, a uh, Google Translate at the moment, but you can get an idea of the different vehicles here. Let's walk around. So let me know if you see me and hear me correctly. There is not the best cell phone reception here for 4G, but there is a 5G connection. We are close to um, Dorowski, Borowski. <laughs> it's really hard to pronounce. Doro, do, uh, Dorowsko is, is the first word. Uh, and that's the nearest town, it's about an hour away. And that's one of the largest training grounds for NATO currently. But here at Borno Solinovo is a uh, former abandoned Soviet base. It started as a German base called Grossdron, and this was taken over in the late 30s. Uh, the Big H, the German leader, the Austrian who took over the Germans, he was photographed here in these grounds. Uh, the main general that led the advance towards Poland launched his Polish invasion from here. Uh, this was the main German base. Then when the Soviets came rushing in with all these tanks, and we're going to see a few tanks down there, then it became uh, Soviet. However, this was kept secret. This was not in the maps. This was not, uh, you couldn't find this in the maps. You couldn't find this just driving around. There was probably heavy protection. And no one really knew about this, at least publicly, for a long time. Until very recently, uh, people started moving back in. And currently, this area of Borny Solonovo, there's about 5,000 people living here. So let me know where you're watching from. And let's look at the ve uh, vehicles without further ado. That's the background of it. Now, why is there a secret Soviet, why was there a secret Soviet base over here? <sighs> the most likely reason is because there was nuclear silos nearby. So this, I, I was trying to do my research, I couldn't find definitive uh, evidence that there was nuclear weapons stored in Poland, but that most likely was the case. And the sun is peaking, yeah, it, it's been a very cloudy past week. So this is part of a two week adventure as we're roaming around with my friend Evan, we have another friend joining us as well, and uh, we are exploring uh, different parts of Europe. 
into the heart of darkness, I mean the heart of Europe, uh, to enjoy all the history that is offered here. And here we have the tanks. This is the GSP-55. Look at that. This is amphibious, it kind of looks like it. I can't quite tell for sure. Is it open to the public? Yeah, it is open to the public. It's a very small entrance fee. I still am working out the, um, the, the uh, conversion in my head, but it's about four Polish, um, I'm not sure what the currency is called yet. This is my first time in Poland, so I don't know too much about Poland so deeply, uh, but it's about four Polish currency for every dollar. And uh, the fee was very small. It was, it was like a, a few dollars. And yeah, it's open to the public. You can roam around the entire area as much as you would want. And look, <laughs> we're looking inside the tank. That's cool. <laughs> oh, wow. This is awesome because usually if you were to go to a military museum in America, uh, these would be roped off. I couldn't get as close and I couldn't touch <laughs> The tank. Oh my god, yep. It is a tank. It is indeed a tank. Uh, this is the BWP-1. Susie says, what part of Poland am I in? I am currently about three hour and a half drive from Berlin. Uh, it's about three more hours or so to Warsaw. Uh, so we are in northern Poland region, uh, closer to the German side. Cuckoo says, do they let you ride some of them? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is awesome, I gotta admit. Oh my god, I've never been right by a tank before. Here we have the missiles or, or um, the explosives. We have a random cat just <laughs> chilling around here. Uh-oh, look who we found. We found Evan. <laughs> Hello. Hey. How are you enjoying the museum so far? I think uh, this is one of the most complete collection of uh, uh, old Soviet equipment I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, it has oh, a little wow. bit of everything from various eras. And uh, I don't know if you went inside the hangar. Let's go inside. Let's do it. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's quite interesting. Hold this. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Clip it on. So Evan is um, the one doing all the driving. He's very brave. <laughs> I would love to drive Expert. one of those, to be, to be honest, but I'm happy with the car. And uh, Evan uh, is, is hosting official urbanist tours uh, starting in Greece in October of 2024, but you can also book your tours next year as well. The booking is super easy. Go to tours.urbanist.live. All the details are there. We're gonna do a live video later this week to discuss the tour in detail so you can learn more about Greece, but stay tuned for that. Uh, but without further ado, let's uh, walk inside. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is the largest one. So you've been to a few of these uh, museums before then? They are, yeah. uh, there, there are quite a few museums and spaces like this in and around uh, former Eastern countries of the former Eastern European bloc. Yeah. And uh, you can see, I mean, things are quite open and you can have a look inside the compartment. You can and, actually touch uh, as well. Yeah, so, interact yeah. with it. It's, uh, you know, it's quite fun to see a machine, uh, a formidable machine up close and personal, especially belonging to the armory of the former Eastern Bloc. So it's quite, uh, it's quite fascinating to see. It is quite fascinating to see, um, especially something that's so open and uh, I'm surprised that they just allow us to get so up and close and personal with it. Yeah. And Susie is asking, who's the mysterious third guy? <laughs> we, uh, we have him, uh, he's hiding somewhere. <laughs> uh, under or over or under a tank. <laughs> exactly, somewhere uh, or other. Hey, Mighty Bull, nice to see you here. Hello, <laughs> Daros. Uh, John says, uh, turn around and see the artillery. I showed it in the beginning, but I will show it one more time as we exit. <laughs> yeah, wow, so, what is this? So these two are uh, quite uh, important, I guess. This is a, tough, a T-55. Yeah. And, and this used to be kind of the mainstay, I guess, 
you know, at some point from in the 50s and early 60s, and then you have, you know, this uh, range developing to the T72, which was, you know, one of the most improved ones. <coughs> 125 millimeter 120. Uh, cannon, which is quite formidable, and we can see how it's kind of so long and yeah, um, quite a, quite a killer, really. And, and this type of tanks we see these deployed in, you know, in the war in in Ukraine, quite quite prominently still. Currently, still. Yes. Wow. So yeah. wow, this is a, this type of tank still used in the Ukraine. That is crazy. And then right up there is the gunner. Yeah, you yeah. would have, uh, you know, a crew, and then you have, uh, uh, you know, say, let's say that the leader coming out of, of there, and then you have, uh, uh, you know, other functions. You have a gunner, perhaps, with, uh, you know, operating a machine gun mm. uh, up there. You have kind of a driver uh, also poking out the head from, from the compartment here, and... The driver yeah. would sometimes have to pop up in order to see where he's going, right? And, I guess, you know, uh, yeah, they keep that. Keep it would be very little head away, uh, view. <laughs> yeah, I'm not much of a tanker, but yeah, you keep the hatches open when it's all kind of, the coast is clear, yeah. I guess, so you, you can get some fresh air and kind of navigate just with your, with your senses, kind of look and hear, et cetera. And when it gets uh, busy, I guess you close down the hatches and all you can see yeah, it's like through crazy. this kind of little prism, it's like so a tight. very thick bulletproof glass, kind of looking out, uh, you know, basically just, just in front of you, really. Just uh, a tiny slither. Um, yeah. And that's the point of the tank. They, they can uh, batten down the hatches and withstand any crossfire. Yeah. And then this one is crazy because uh, what's in the back? Do, do you know what that is? <laughs> I, I tend to believe that you know, those yeah. Soviet tanks had uh, also anti-tank missiles oh, I see. Um, attached to them, so you would have, uh, sometimes the Soviets tended to put them kind of on top yeah. uh, of the main gun, mm. attach them there and kind of that direction, but sometimes they had kind of missile launchers just, just behind them. Um, so I think this is, this is what those are, anti-tank missile launchers. And even a huge machine gun right over there. Uh, wow, yeah. <clears throat> that's that's it. This was a beast. Probably, probably went at a snail's pace, though. Yeah, uh, I can <clears throat> imagine. <clears throat> and this one, uh, what, what do you think this was? Well, this is uh, goes in front of the trucks. You lower yeah. it, and then it clears the path. Uh, if there is a minefield, uh, wow. <clears throat> then you lower it, and it's a kind of a mine kind of it's clears a, a path through a minefield. Wow, essentially, yeah. Uh, it just goes in front of the tank. Of if a mine explodes kind of close to the armor, then you know you, you know it's just you don't have a problem. The problem is if it explodes right underneath your truck and therefore disabling the tank. So that's a quick way to kind of clear a path in front of your trucks and keep going through a minefield without disruption. Interesting. Yeah, I would assume that they would go in uh, formation. So this would go up front, clearing the mines. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah taking down tanks in front of it, and then you will have the other ones behind it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an interesting one over yeah. there. <clears throat> Let's check it out, yeah. Uh, you can see which is a kind of a portable uh, bridge. So you can, uh, right that here. one over there, yeah. <clears throat> so it's a hydraulic bridge, and then oh, you yeah. can just place it just over a stream or, uh, or another, I guess, uh, obstacle or a trench, and then quickly wow. bridge the gap. Uh, that, is, that is impressive. Yeah, creating a very quick bridge huh. that you can then kind of, uh, you know, fold again and take it with you uh, and onwards to the next stream and onwards to the next river. It's quite cool. So we have a few Polish viewers. That's awesome. I wonder how you guys found this uh, broadcast. That, yeah. That's quick. Uh, I don't know how to read Polish, but thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to ask questions in English or anyone, feel free to translate. And this is awesome to see this... Um, this bridge uh, vehicle. My uncle, who was a captain of the U.S. Army, uh, was involved in making bridges as well. So I wonder if he had experience with a similar American vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he did not serve a war, but he was around the time of the Persian Gulf. Yeah, yeah that's impressive. Um, and this would be, the American version would be a warthog. 
These would be similar, right? Yeah, it seems, uh, yeah. seems like an old kind of Jeep style yeah. vehicle, a gas, kind of the equivalent of a Jeep, small kind of nimble uh, personnel carrier. Uh, Gary says, there was always a fear in the 1980s that Russian tanks would evade East Germany. Uh, that was when they started selling Russian-made Lada cars in the UK. I see. Which didn't, which didn't last for too long. They rusted to pieces <laughs> in two years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen the, uh, <clears throat> I've seen the uh, ads uh, you know, from in the United States for Yugoslav cars, like uh, Yugo. They seem to have been all the rays, or though there was an effort to export, <laughs> uh, you know, former kind of, uh, you know, Yugoslav cars in the U.S. Uh -huh. They didn't go that far, former Soviet um, cars. I think. But uh, it was sweet to see uh, such a kind of uh, classic uh, Eastern European car being kind of at least the effort to pitch it in the U.S. It was quite, uh, quite funny. It, it was quite funny. Yeah, that's funny. I wonder what this one was. <laughs> Yeah, this is some sort of kind of tractor where you can pull, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you use it for heavier stuff usually. It's very small but powerful, and you would typically use it to mm. uh, kind of drag a, uh, an artillery piece, perhaps, through muddy uh, conditions, so it's kind of tracked, very powerful. Uh, a few people are asking, Dados is asking, uh, where are we located in Poland? Um, the best way I can describe it is we're about three hours away from Berlin. We, uh, we are uh, halfway between Berlin and Warsaw. I yes. See. Yeah. Towards so, more north. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, let's check out this car in, here in the back. Mm -hmm. And this is Bornu Solinovo. Bornu Solinovo. I'll write it down in the comments afterwards, and you're gonna see another short video about the history of the abandoned Soviet base. Stay tuned for that. Wow. Oh, I so wish I could step into one of these. <laughs> I would totally ride this up in New York City. <laughs> yeah, this looks quite comfortable. This, this, this would be about the same size yeah. as most uh, American vehicles. <laughs> sure, yes. I mean, most American vehicles are, are military size, I think. So, I think they are, yeah. Um, you know, very, very comfortable and uh, tall and, and bulky. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the way everyone likes it. There's a date here, 1995 or 6, uh, 1985. <clears throat> so we know more or less, you know, the era. Yeah, that's uh, right. The era that this was being used. I wonder what this says. Uh -huh. Let us know if anyone can translate, but there's a... Well, it appears to look like a smaller version of an AK-47. It, it says, uh, <coughs> say hello to my Ooh. little friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good theory. That's a good theory. <laughs> Polish <laughs> viewers, please, please confirm. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> And of course, these were used in the war as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, uh, you know, riding through all these mud and grits, uh, and at some point, uh, you know, someone, the, the unlucky, uh, perhaps the, the, uh, the, the youngest person in the company or, or something like that would have to the toddler. hose it all down, you know, while everyone else is taking it easy and kind of chilling out. Well, of course, you yeah. still need to farm for your war. <laughs> Yeah, you have to keep it uh, clean and tidy. It's yeah. very, uh, it's very important for the morale and for morale and uh, you know. So let's thing. check out these last two, and then we'll check out the last one in the back. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Isabel Isabel says that was a perfect translation. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that? That's a. Oh, that's a Panzer sixty eight. Well, that's a. Uh, Surprisingly enough, that's a Swiss tank. Oh, this is a Swiss tank. Uh, I had no idea the Swiss had or any use for tanks or, or tanks whatsoever, but yeah, it is a Swiss tank. I don't know how how it was ended up how it ended up here, but here we are. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a beautiful one. I love the design of this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Swiss tank. <clears throat> My blow up. 
Is this literally one of the ballistics used? It could be, yeah. This um, looks like a, one of those kind of rocket propelled grenades, um, maybe, uh, where it kind of, kind of launches like a rocket and then it uses this kind of propeller to kind of propel itself to the, like an anti-tank missile of some sort. I don't know what type, but it looks like it. You want to take one of these just in case? Because we're going to go to some crazy territory. Yeah, yeah, we, we might need a few of those. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's a shell. That's the shell, yeah, wow. You know, this is something I never really have encountered before. Even in American war museums, you don't see the ammunition, really. Yeah. There's so much of that stuff, and I have to say, in kind of a, perhaps Western Europeans or American, yeah. mu American museums, it's usually kind of very much, I mean, there is kind of a little chain here that kind of separates us from these vehicles, but nobody seems to bother if we interact with those a little bit, or yeah. you know, there's no don't touch kind of signs. Or There is a sign right. outside saying don't climb into the vehicles, but I'm quite certain that we could, uh, if, we could ask, if we would ask them nicely, they would let us um, they have a festival here That's every each yeah. summer that, uh, you know, it's surprising as it seems uh, all of these machines work uh, and they take them out for a, for a drive in the fields and, and kind of showcase and demonstrate them uh, mm. over a few days in the summer. It's quite a big kind of meeting. Oh, that's area. fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so all of these work. Uh, it's still in operational condition. So this is the museum we're located in right now, Museum of Military History in Borne Swalinovo. Pardon my, my Polish. I think that's pretty close to how it's pronounced. Yeah. yeah. And here we appear to look at an engine of one of these vehicles. Oh. Yeah. And we have another ballistic right there. Oh, and here we have a rocket launcher. It's a shell. This looks this like... That, this uh, is a shell. This is a shell. <coughs> It, it, it does look like a, like some sort of rocket launcher, yes, like a bazooka of some sort. It, it might be, yeah, yeah. There is the optic there and, you know, yeah, you just I kind of... There is. <clears throat> there is a strap here, you put your hand there, the palm of your hand there to keep it steady and then look on your shoulder and back and then, yeah. You just open it both sides and it's good to go. I'm so glad that I'm able to see this because I covered the USS Wasp in, uh, in New York City one of the larger uh, aircraft carriers uh, or amphibious attack um, vessels. And <laughs> I tried to just bend down to take a closer look and the soldier immediately said, no, <laughs> get away. But meanwhile here, Evan <laughs> is aiming this directly at, at all of you guys. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Wait a minute. Could, uh, you hold the camera, I won't do the same thing. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, don't try this at home. Uh, we have expert personnel, of course, watching. All right, there you go. Oh shit, this is, this is huge. I could play some uh, Quake right now. <laughs> Unreal Tournament. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Everything. The rocket launcher was my favorite uh, gun in Halo 2. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everything is so portable. And it's amazing how so those uh, kind of very expensive, uh, sophisticated machines can yeah. so easily be disabled by anyone uh, with a quick kind of rudimentary kind of training. It's one of those rockets that can do a lot of damage. And this costs a small fraction of what the tank costs, obviously. That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it was, um, it was unfortunately something similar was used in the other tour you gave me in, in, in Greece and Athens. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah and in yeah. the UN attack, the embassy attack, I mean. Yes, yeah. of course, they, they are very portable, they are very easy, uh, straightforward to use, they are kind of point and shoot, so, and they can do kind of massive damage. Uh, uh, and this is kind of the end of the, you know, dominance of tanks on, on the battlefield. Right. And, and, you know, and like unless if you're out in the open, you know. Almo says, uh, release the safety for the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. All right, let's check out these last ones. Yeah.
Uh, <laughs> Blue Star says Quake for me as well. Uh, Din Din says, how much does that weigh? It wasn't too much. Uh, with the rocket, it'll change, but I felt like it was maybe maximum 30 pounds, but not too much. It was rather easy mm -hmm. to... Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hey, Anke. Welcome. Watching from India. All right, this one seems nice. Yeah. It's gutted. All right. You ever wanted to see the insides of a tank? Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The innards of a tank. This one has seen better days, but uh, yeah, it has all sorts of kind of dials and buttons there close to the driver uh, seat and yeah. Cuckoo said, any military bikes? No, <laughs> though they were used. They were used in both world wars. The there was a great museum in the Netherlands that showed military bikes. I <laughs> forgot what city it was. I think it was Leiden. No, it was not Leiden. It was uh, Harlem. What's up there? Uh, this is like a small kind of amphibious vehicle and uh, you can see the you can see the space here. I mean you can uh, <clears throat> has a lot of German writing, so I, I'm not sure if it's a kind of perhaps Eastern German uh, make or or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, you can load a small Jeep or yeah, small vehicle inside and then uh, you carry it like across uh, the waterway or a river. It's, it's amphibious. Maybe this is even, maybe this is the exhaust here that we see. So that makes sense. It doesn't take any water this way. And, uh, and it does look like a boat inside, you know, fitted with... Uh, uh, life preservers and things like that. It's more of a boat. It's as much as a boat as it is a vehicle. <laughs> oh, you can actually peek in right here. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason Evan knows so much about this is um, Evan, like most Greek men, you served a little bit in the military. Yes, yeah. yes, I was. Yeah, I, I was yeah. in the in the Greek Navy. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Evan, um, again, where can people find the tours that you'll be hosting, Urbanist IRL tours, hosted by you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. where can people find it? Well, well you can find it uh, either on your page or on my page, uh, mm -hmm. florapilia.co.uk. Uh, and then and the tour. tours.urbanist.live. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then um, how many days? So we're looking at uh, seven days filled with uh, adventure, histories, uh, strange location, some urban exploration, uh, very good food and drink and drinks and coffee, uh, and a lot of fun uh, to remember. Uh, and it's all uh, put together and curated by Ariel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I you joined. will get um, so you will get a good uh, sense of. Uh, uh, all the things that are uh, exciting uh, about Greece and things that he has curated himself. Right. And don't worry, Evan will protect you. He'll bring one of these with him. <laughs> <laughs> Greece is a very safe country. <laughs> but uh, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Uh, Tours.urbanist.live if you want to learn more about IRL tours, real life tours, multi day throughout Greece with Evan, uh, curated by me. Uh, I joined them all around Greece to find the perfect places. But stay tuned, I'll be posting a short video about the abandoned history of this former town of Borneo Solenovo. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.